Breakfast time once again on Cooking with Jerry. I've got the fire started. I have about two tablespoons of sunflower seed oil. Not the best oil, but it's what I have. My stocks are running low. I'll be going to the city later this morning after breakfast. Uh, to restock my supplies here at these little stores in the village they don't carry a lot of the items I like to eat so once a month I'll go to the city and get what I need so this is a pancake batter which is also kinda like an omelet I'm gonna pour it in and let me explain afterwards the ingredients third time we've done a pancake video but it's different and it's a great idea if you have leftover rice or potato even pasta any kind of pasta spaghetti elbow noodles macaroni and cheese so I've got the batter in the frying pan I'm going to spread out the ingredients a little bit, flatten out the mixture, and cover it. I call it an omelet pancake because there's very little flour and uh, there's more egg compared to what a regular pancake batter would be. So the ingredients for the pancake batter I used three farm fresh eggs. Normally I only use two, but these ones were small, so I put three in. I put about half a teaspoon of pink salt and one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Normally I don't cook with extra virgin oil, but because I don't have the other ones, like coconut oil, or just plain virgin olive oil. I also like to use butter, but I haven't been to the city and I ran out of those items a while ago, so today I'll restock. Then I also put with the strainer uh, one tablespoon of plantain flour, which is powder. I put two tablespoons of sacha inchi powder which is similar to almond flour it's a nut I put I'm looking at my list one teaspoon of pure cocoa powder one teaspoon of coca powder which is from the plant that produces cocaine but if you get the coca powder it's got a lot of nutritional value and I also put one tablespoon of corn flour so there's no wheat flour, which makes the batter a little bit more delicate than a regular pancake batter that uses the wheat flour. So that's the pancake batter. And the leftovers I had, I tried to use all my stock before going back to the city. So I used a lot of what I had left and what went in last meal was a little bit of amaranth, a little bit of whole wheat grain, and a little bit of quinoa. And I cooked that in uh, the suitable amount of water, but I added a bit extra because I also used all the other seeds and dried fruit that I had. There's about one tablespoon of sesame seed, same one tablespoon of sunflower seed, and pumpkin seed those absorb water during the cooking process and I also put about one tablespoon of a mix of dried cranberries yellow raisins purple raisins I had two small dates I removed the pit and put them in the water and I had three dried apricots all of those nuts no there were no nuts one pecan I had one pecan left I broke it into smaller pieces. All of the nut seeds, the dried fruit, were washed and rinsed before I put them into the water with the other grains and the seeds. And the apricot I cut up into smaller pieces. And what else? Ah yes, I also put one beetroot, 
which gave it this fun red color. I put one carrot and one tomato. The tomato may have been a mistake because it gives an acidity that kind of goes against all the other flavors. But it's what I had left, so I put it in there and then uh, I cooked it as you would normally cook. It took about 25 minutes and that was my last meal with a little bit of leftover. I added it to the pancake batter so it's going to increase the nutritional value, the content. There is a fair bit of sugar from the dried fruit. Even the whole grain wheat, amaranth and quinoa provide sugar, but the amaranth and quinoa are seeds. So it'll be much less sugar. But for yourself, if you have a pile of leftover rice or leftover pasta, potato, sweet potato, you could put that in the mix. I suggest you cut them up into smaller pieces, if they're big pieces. I did in this pancake batter, I cut up the pieces of carrot and beetroot because I had left them big pieces during my last meal. So I cut them small so that they blend in better with the pancake batter and they're not sticking up so high that it doesn't allow when I flip it, it, it doesn't allow the batter to, to reach the frying pan. So I would cut them up into smaller pieces. And that's about it. Uh, let me think. Yeah, as far as I can remember. So this is, I'm doing a pancake version. And it's not really a pancake, but it's going to be round like a pancake. So I call it pancake. But you can make it a lot easier on yourself, especially if you're cooking for a lot of people, even three or four people. Instead of making three or four of these pancakes, you can put it in the oven or the toaster oven, if it's big enough, and bake it. That way you do your batter, you put everything together, put the batter into a suitable oven safe container. If you want to line that container with some oven paper or at least put some butter or oil so that it's easier to unstick at the end, put it in the oven at about 350 or 370 and then you can walk away for the 40, 45 minutes or maybe even an hour if your oven isn't so strong and you're making a huge container for let's say 10 or 15 people. You walk away and you come back in an hour or whenever uh, is, is the right amount of time and you have this great meal or side dish to go along with your other meal. There's also the option, it smells great, there's also the option to at the end of the baking process you can put some uh, leftover bacon that's already been cooked or you could add beef, chicken, pork, even fish into the batter before you put it in the oven. Also on top you can put grated cheese. Many kinds of cheese would go really well with this kind of batter. Cream cheese, uh, just a moment. I don't want the water, the condensation, to go onto the pancake because it'll make the, um, the pancake a bit more delicate. And we still have to do the flip. Almost ready. If you put cheese on top uh, towards the end of the baking process and you put the broil or grill setting on your oven, You'll get the cheese to bubble up nicely and sometimes it even gets a crusty brownish layer which is very enjoyable. Um, so that would make it much easier when it's done. Remove it from the oven, cut it into squares or however you want to cut it. If you have leftovers you can put it in the fridge or in the freezer for a later day. This kind of pancake batter is much healthier. There's a lot more nutrition than the regular store-bought bread you're going to get um, because there's much less sugar content. There's a better balance of sugar and no sugar. 
And if it's in the freezer, it's very convenient. You can grab one square for your breakfast or if you want to have something as a snack later in the day, maybe you're going to work or school or maybe you have a road trip where you'll be away from home for five or six hours and you figure your hunger is going to come back during that time and you don't want to buy what you see on the road. You can bring one of those frozen pieces by the time it's ready to eat. It'll be thawed. If you slice down the middle of those pieces if they're thick enough and then you freeze it, it's very convenient to take out of the freezer, put into your toaster or make yourself a sandwich for your lunch instead of using the normal store-bought bread. If you haven't seen the parts of the video where I explain, one slice of bread is going to have a very similar effect on your body as one tablespoon of sugar. So to avoid that quantity of sugar with that normal bread, this kind of bread is much more balanced and much more nutritious. So it's ready for the flip. And with the flip you have to be careful always. There's also been many times where the oil has come up like a wave. I do the flip and then the oil doesn't land in the frying pan but it lands on the floor. So I try to get the oil to be on top of the pancake and here we go there's one weak edge it's got a little bit of a opening so I don't want to flip there and you flip there's a little bit here I'm going to wipe it off so it doesn't get cooked on just with my sponge very quickly makes the cleanup process at the end easier for this and for this one I put it back on. So here now what I want to do is just flatten it a little bit because there are still some pieces of carrot and beetroot that are not allowing the batter to touch the frying pit. And there are a few cracks. This kind of batter is a bit delicate. If you want, you can add wheat flour. Makes it a lot more stable. And if you... Excuse me. If you want to make more quantity, the wheat flour is the least expensive. These powders, seed powders, nut powders, they are more expensive, but they last a long time. The, the what I have... I bought three months ago and there's still about three more months that I can make these kinds of pancakes before I have to buy some more. But for sure if you're making a quantity, so let's say 15 people, uh, much more economical to use the wheat flour or whole wheat flour. Um, so now what I like to do, uh, now it's okay for the water. To, to go on to the pancake because we've done the flip. I like to cut the pancake into pieces. There are some cracks that I'll just follow along. Normally I'll just cut it into triangles and then many times I'll also cut it into bite-sized pieces. It makes it easier for me when I'm sitting with my plate. I already have bite-sized pieces and the heat gets to go inside the pancake a bit better and it will also create a bit of a crust on those inside pieces which is also enjoyable so this is going to cook I'll leave it like this for about one minute and then I'll stir it I can also smell the cocoa I'll stir it and then uh, it'll get more evenly cooked and at the end I don't use any kind of sugar or syrup what I like to use many times is this homemade chocolate nut spread uh, but I don't have any there is a video please watch it it's really tasty 
Uh, you can also add vegan cheese. I made a video for that as well. Much healthier than your pancake syrup or maple syrup. Honey can be healthy if it's used like medicine. And be careful when you buy honey because many companies take advantage of the consumer and they add other sweetener to the honey so it's not pure honey but honey even though it can be a health food there's a lot of sugar in honey so be careful with the honey I don't put any sweetener I, I'll put because I don't have anything else I'll put extra virgin oil on top of it when I serve it on my plate just to minimize the sugar that I put into my body because the body really doesn't want sugar unless you're in an extreme starvation situation then sugar is the best thing because it goes directly to the body to the muscles it gets digested very quickly so in that sense sugar is good but if you're living and you're able to eat normally regularly throughout the day every day then sugar is best avoided as much as possible I read many years ago there was a doctor in the 18th century she said that sugar is worse for the body than heroin and we all know well maybe not all of us but heroin is a disaster on the body um, she, in the end she was wrong that thinking that hair sugar was worse than heroin but it's just an example to express how much damage sugar does when it's in your body so if you're eating that pancake syrup or table syrup or maple syrup or the brown sugar and cinnamon try and understand the damage that's being created yes it tastes great and we many people are accustomed to putting that pancake syrup even uh, a big dollop of whipped cream which is mostly sugar try to understand the damage that sugar does and when you can fully understand there's no sacrifice when you're having your dinner and there's a piece of cake available you understand that sugar damages there's no sacrifice to say no to that piece of cake there's no discipline necessary you understand fully for me it's very easy I've been to many birthday parties where they have this very sugary unhealthy cake and for me it's no problem I can say no easy because I understand the damage I have had a satisfying meal and that's what my body needs it does not want that sugar uh, also one way to think about it is the sugar it's enjoyable for those few moments in your mouth but then there's maybe at least six hours maybe even longer that the body has to somehow manage all of this sugar that you just put into it before it finally leaves your body so those few moments in your mouth compared to the many hours in your body that your body has to try and minimize the damage that's being created from that sugar anyway there's my little speech my pancake is done I'll wait a couple of minutes and then serve it on my plate with some olive oil maybe even a pinch of salt and a very nutritious breakfast uh, much better than regular pancakes lots of good properties lots of good nutrition the main thing with every meal is trying to have minimal sugar by way of pasta rice potato bread and to have mostly food that's not going to convert to sugar mm, beans well beans are about three quarters sugar but still uh, nuts seeds uh, eggs uh, cheese uh, any kind of beef 
chicken, pork, fish. That is not sugar and that will help to balance the amount of sugar that goes into your stomach and in the end it'll help to control your blood sugar level. So another great way to make a pancake, it can be for breakfast, lunch or dinner or as a snack. A uh, great option compared to toast or pretzels or opening up a bag of potato chips. Even popcorn has a lot of sugar. There's fiber, yep, but there's a lot of sugar. Uh, much better than a bowl of ice cream or a cookie or a piece of cake or most of the granola bars that you'll find in the grocery store. Try it out. I know I'll enjoy it and it'll keep me full probably for at least four hours. My stomach won't need to eat again and I'll be going to the city soon after I finish and then um, I won't need to eat when I'm in the city because it's not so easy to find healthy food in the city. I'll be fine until I come back and I can prepare another meal with the restocked supply I'll have which will be exciting. So please try it, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching and when I'm in the city I'll also be buying the software hopefully to splice videos together if I've done that and I figured it out please stay tuned there'll be a variety show section after the, I turn off the video camera. First two variety shows were about plants this one will be about cement there's a piece sitting right beside the camera that I started yesterday and uh, we'll finish it today and I'll try and splice it to the end of this video so please stay tuned if all goes well thank you for today's variety show segment we're going to do some work with cement I learned how to work with cement about 10 years ago living at my uncle's house in Italy for two consecutive summers there was a crew doing some major renovations and it involved a lot of cement. So me being there I would watch, ask questions and then I started playing with cement myself. Here are some examples of what I've done recently. This I used a plastic container. I put this wire mesh inside the plastic container with this much cement and I held the wire mesh together with this uh, galvanized steel which means it's just not going to rust as quickly as regular steel. And I use it for my kitchen tools. I made a smaller one, the same kind of thing, but I used the bottom of a soda bottle and this was one of the first ones when I thought that nails were necessary to hold the wire mesh in place, but they're not necessary. Here was one that happened later using uh, the piece of a coconut and another smaller soda bottle and I put some rocks here just for decoration. Here is one that still hasn't found a home. It's a bit more complex because it's got the wire mesh in the middle, which means if you're going to use it in your kitchen, you can use it for when you wash utensils, cutlery, knives, bigger spoons, etc. Very useful. I've made a lot of these and given them away as gifts because the turnover to try and sell them, it's just not worth it. The cement, there's very little cement, so it's peanuts for the price. And the wire mesh, also very low in cost. And the turnaround, if I were to sell it, it wouldn't be worth the time that I used to make it. So I get the fun to make it, to create something, and then I get the fun to give it away as a gift. So these are some examples. What we're doing today is when I arrived about three months ago the owner wanted something to have as decoration. So I had used this piece of bamboo. It was freshly cut so it hadn't dried 
as it needed to. And I knew it would be a problem, but there was a specific date that the owner wanted to have this ready, and that date didn't allow enough drying time for the bamboo. So, the bamboo shrunk as it dried, and I had made this container, I'll show you, using this as the base, you can see the base, original, and then I put this as the container, and then I had this, I would, I first put uh, wet cement, and then I put this in there, and then I let it to dry overnight, but you know, over the, over the subsequent two months, the, some, the bamboo shrunk and it eventually cracked leaving the bottom piece loose so I removed these two pieces uh, this is probably no longer good because it's already cracking so I don't think there's any point to reuse this it can be used for something as a temporary thing but to put in cement which can last a lifetime I don't think there's any value. So here is the piece that was originally around the bamboo. And I have cleaned it, I chipped off the little pieces of cement, concrete, sorry, that were at the bottom. And I have it soaking in water because if it's dry, it's two months old, it's going to suck up the water too quickly from the new cement that we're going to use today. So I have it in water. And what's interesting is, you can see that the water, I don't know if you can see, the water has traveled up here on one side and traveled up here on the other side, which tells me that there's a weakness in the concrete. But that's not a problem because I'm going to put this piece in here with fresh cement and this new container will strengthen any kind of weakness. And what the owner can do is she can put another plant in there or she can use it something similar like this to put scissors, pens, or if she wants to use it in the kitchen. So that's what we're going to do today. Fairly simple, easy process to introduce cement on cooking with Jerry. So let's get started. First step was to make cement. I made cement, uh, about a 50-50 mixture of sand and pure cement. And it's fairly liquid. It's good to knock it like this or to shake it because cement has air bubbles. And that way you release the air bubbles before you put it in the container, in its intended container. So that's what I'm gonna do. And for this, sorry, I'll explain. Here there's some tape because there was a crack in the plastic container. So I don't want the cement to leak through the crack, so I just put a piece of tape. And here there's a piece of tape on both sides with a small piece of cardboard because there is a bit of space around the rim that was produced at the factory when they made this plastic container. So I don't want the cement to make a bulge going down this way. So I put the cement, uh, I put the cardboard as a barrier so that it stays flat. So here we go. Let's put some cement into this container. Whenever I'm mixing cement, I always wear a face mask because the one thing, the one and only thing that pure dry cement powder wants is moisture. And if I don't have a mask on, that cement powder is going to find moisture in my nose and in my lungs, which would probably eventually clean itself out but to avoid having my nose and my lungs have to clean out cement dust, I put a face mask. Just one of those that we're all familiar now with the COVID virus, walking around with one of those face masks. 
I put that on when I am making the cement. After the cement is made, I don't need it anymore. So that could be a little bit too much cement, but not a big deal. Cleaning out my little container. Okay, and now we need to flatten. And you probably can't see, but there are some bubbles coming up. I'm going to knock it. Try and also uh, use the spoon to rub against the sides so that air bubbles don't show up on the sides. And this container I've used similar before gives a really nice pattern on the outside. Another reason why I'm, I'm using this container. So, get it nice and flat. Remove the bubbles, and uh, this is going to go inside, and let's see what happens. So you can see it's a tube now, where this was before, like this, and the bottom. So recycling this cement tube, trying to get it as close as possible to the center, the middle of the tube is also going to have cement enter it and it's fairly heavy this cement so it's probably going to sink almost to the bottom. So that's it and because it was wet it uh, it's not going to produce like a wave. What happens when you put a dry piece of concrete into wet cement? You, you get kind of a, a, a negative attraction. They kind of fight each other. That's not the right word, but you, you need to have the old piece of concrete wet before you put it in fresh cement. So that's it. I'm going to put it on the work counter, which is right beside the camera, because this is my surface for cooking, and I still have another meal left today, and obviously tomorrow and I don't want this to be in the way, so I'm going to put this over there. This is not quite even. What I'll do is I'll support something, I'll put something here like a piece of wood or, or a piece of cardboard. I'll just double check when I get to over there and uh, we'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you how it turned out. Alright, welcome back to part two of this variety show and here's the piece we worked on. Now it's not tomorrow as I said, it's the day after tomorrow because yesterday I was in the city and I didn't get back until it was already dark. And I don't want this bright light at night time because it attracts way too many bugs being in an outdoor space. So this has had almost two days to set and cure with the proper term or you can say dry but I think the proper term is cure, cement cures. And it takes cement about 28 days to fully cure as far as what I've read on the internet. Something this small, I don't know if it takes 28 days. If I want to paint cement, uh, concrete, excuse me, I'll try and wait at least seven days if it's something small like this. Just to allow time for the concrete to cure and, and allow the air to get into it before putting a layer of paint. So it uh, should be solid it, and the good thing about waiting the two days is the cement it'll have had a lot of time to pull and these impressions should be as close to perfect as we can get to it. But before we open this up there are two things I wanted to say from the cooking portion. Number one, I forgot to say that I added water to the batter. So make sure you add a little bit of water, but not too much, 
because too much will make the batter too delicate, too fragile. And the second thing I wanted to say is if you're going to include any kind of grain, grain like rice, whole grain wheat, or oats, or if you want to do the seed, quinoa, amaranth, you should cook them longer, allowing them to absorb more water. Because if you put it in the oven, the baking process will dry those little pieces out, especially if they're on the surface or on the sides. If they're inside the batter, uh, they, they won't dry out. But on the surface, uh, it'll dry and become crunchy, which could be painful for someone who crunches down and has teeth problems or an unfilled cavity. So if you're going to bake it, you can also even pre-soak it the night before. That gets water a lot deeper inside. But then also try and cook it with a little bit more water. It's also good to have that uh, left over at least at room temperature instead of pulling it directly out of the fridge. So pull it out of the fridge one or two hours before you make the batter or you can heat it on the stove or in the microwave before you make the batter and add it to the batter. So those were the two things I wanted to say about the cooking portion. Now about the cement. Um, I didn't put any kind of oil or lubrication on the container before I poured the cement because the container is fairly smooth. If you have something that's not quite so smooth, then it's a good idea to I use a paintbrush sometimes and I've just got regular cooking vegetable oil that I use and I put a very thin layer of this oil on the inside of the container that I'm going to use. If I think there might be an issue of the cement as it cures and becomes concrete that it might get into those imperfections of the container. Another thing is when you're pouring fresh cement it's important especially in the first few days that the temperature doesn't go below freezing zero degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what it is Fahrenheit but the reason is because the water inside will freeze and it will make the concrete very weak. Now this would only be a problem if you're working in your garage and it's a cold enough winter. In that case you might want to bring the small piece, is easy, if it's a big piece it might be a bit more difficult. Bring it inside or somehow insulate it so that it's not going to go below zero. Here it's really hot and so what I do with this, it's just a spray bottle with water, uh, regular in, not regular intervals, but I will spray it many times, especially during the first day and a half. And when I'm done here, I will wash it under the tap just to slow down the curing process. Uh, when cement cures at a slower rate, it becomes a stronger piece of concrete. So that's another thing to remember when you are working or playing with cement. I say playing and not working because I'm not getting paid. So here, um, for yourself, if you want to try, if you don't have this tube already, I'm looking here at the other pieces. Here, if you have an old piece of tube or you see something at a construction or a demolition site that you know would otherwise go in the garbage, or you can ask who was ever in charge at that work site if you can take this piece that's going to go in the garbage. Cut the size you want. If you want just uh, spoons, knives, or pens, pencils, you can make a small one. If you want it for the bigger knives, the bigger spoons, spatula, you'll want to make it bigger. So you cut the piece. You probably want to sand the outer edge that's going to be on top. You pour the cement and then really simple, you just put the piece inside and try and make sure it's as level as possible. So that's an idea. Here is another container that I've used only once so far. I had it like this and I used it to make a plant pot, a vase for a plant. 
So I cut both sides because with this uh, curve, it's really hard to pull it apart. If it's smooth, you can just cut one side and then when it's dry the next day or the day after, you can open it up and then gently remove this outer container. But with both sides cut, it's really easy just to spread it apart. And also, here's a very small bottle. I wouldn't make a tube out of this one, but this could be potentially the inside. Something like this, you're going to, it's going to be a one-time use because when the cement cures like this, it's not going to slide out. So in this case, uh, it would be, like I say, you, you'd need to wait a day or two and then carefully with scissors or with a knife, cut it open and then just peel it out. Uh, much easier to do when the container is straight or uh, not curving inwards. So let's get to it. When I open something like this, it's almost like opening a present. This one is fairly simple, so I don't expect any surprises. But sometimes uh, it's a surprise if your plan worked as you thought it would. So I have some tools here that I think I might need. So I'm just going to loosen. Oh, and it's coming out already. And here it is. Now this container can be reused many times. Eventually uh, it'll get imperfections and that's when I would use some kind of oil. So here it is. Let me come closer so you can see the impressions that the container made and even the bottom. The, as I said, the cardboard was necessary so that this didn't bulge and here the rim on the outside will be what this uh, piece sits on. And you can also see that there are some raised edges. So what I'm going to do is with the, that knife or any kind of sharp edge, I'm just going to shave it so that it's a smooth finish. So I'm shaving it, I'm going to use the other side so I don't scratch the tube. And I'm just going to go around and just shave off that little edge that showed up when I moved it and I was shaking it. Uh, some of the cement, like a wave, kind of went up on the edge of the container and that's how this happened. But really easy to remove the edge just by scraping it with something sharp and thin. This could be used also, but it's not quite so thin. So for this specific piece, I'm using the thinner piece because it's easier and the thicker piece isn't necessary. So we went all the way around and that's it. Uh, I have a piece of sandpaper. It's not a new piece. A new piece would do probably a bit of damage. This is an old piece I've used many times. And I'm just going to scrape, make the surface flat, and that edge that we just scraped, make it a lot smoother and more comfortable to the touch. Just going to go around once, and then we'll be done. There it is. All right. Now you might be able to see that the tube didn't set perfectly straight. It's at a bit of an angle. But that's the way it went. And uh, oh, here's a piece of cement, concrete. A little piece right here that collected on the tube. Just scrape that off. So because it's just going to be used for something simple and there's not going to be anything stacked on top, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. It works perfectly. Yeah. So 
a really fun and relatively easy do-it-yourself project and like I said you can do a bunch of these and give them away as gifts. The easiest would be using a, an old piece of PVC tube or a new piece if you want to invest in a new piece. I always try to recycle whenever possible. Um, so great idea, Christmas is coming up. If you want to make one for each of your family households, then every time you go to their house, you'll see that they're using it. I've given many of these away as gifts. And uh, it's something that they'll look at and they'll be reminded of you. So give it a try and um, have some fun. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.